the Rhino Vipers, captive care tips, and a live feeding coming up. Subscribe now. Fangs in your face. What's up, Venom Squad? Hey guys, today we're gonna do the Rhino Vipers. And we got a beautiful little specimen right here. This is one of our captive born babies. Now I didn't produce these, I got these from another guy who's a very successful breeder of Bittus Nasa Carnus. But let me tell you guys, Rhino Viper, one of the African Bittus, one of the big African Bittus. Now we've got our Gaboons and we've got our Puff Adders and then the Rhino Viper. Now the Rhino Viper, of course, is the most beautiful. I mean, they are just gorgeous, right? And they range throughout mid-Africa, but they're pretty much stable in, you know, tropical rainforest. I mean, primary forest is, is where they're, they're, they're mostly found and some secondary forest, but they're always associated with marshes, swamps, rivers. They actually call them river jacks. And the new name, which I just got privy to this, Dina told me about it, they're calling them the butterfly viper. <laughs> Okay, they may have been calling them that for years, but I'm not calling my rhinos a butterfly viper. It's not going to happen. But anyways, hey guys, the venom of a rhino viper, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of research done on it. And it's been believed to be partially cytotoxic, like your gaboons and your puffs, but we know that it's largely hemotoxic, okay? And some keepers believe that there may even be traces of neurotoxics. So... We don't know a lot about the venom. Um, we know it is, it's it's a kill bite. It can kill you. I mean, it's definitely toxic enough to kill you, but we don't believe that they're as toxic as a gaboon or a puff adder. Um, there was one recorded fatality of a rhino viper bite in Dayton, Ohio in 2003, I think it was. Um, very sad story. A fireman that was a venom snake enthusiast took a bite and perished from it. <clears throat> but anyways, <clears throat> Now, captive care, guys, I'm going to tell you, this is a delicate damn snake. They're not as hardy as gaboons. They're nowhere as hardy as a damn puff adder. Rhino vipers require captive care that's kind of more geared towards a skilled keeper. And everybody wants a rhino because, look at them, they're gorgeous. I mean, what a gorgeous specimen, right? I've got three of them, and this is one of my little females. But, and they, they're so variable too i mean from different regions we have the i believe my are the ugandans but the ones that come from like the ituri forest the congo regions i mean they they, they range and they're so beautiful man they're just electric but the thing with rhinos vipers is you cannot keep them hot a lot of keepers think okay he's an african snake he's from the damn rainforest in africa it's hot and steamy high humidity you keep them like that and you're going to kill them I'm going to tell you right now, this snake is susceptible to respiratory more than any other snake you're ever going to keep. If a snake's going to get respiratory, it's going to be a rhino viper. <laughs> That's just a fact. And I've kept them through the years. I've never successfully bred rhino vipers, just pure rhinos. I've, I've bred rhinos and gaboons together and produced gabinos. And I actually did it on accident, but I did do it. But I've never bred rhinos. But we're going to do it in the next couple years here. But let me tell you something else. If you keep these things too hot, they'll shut down on you. They don't do good. If you keep them too cold, they don't do good. The way I keep rhino vipers, I keep them very simple. Now, a lot of keepers will keep them on a thick layer of substrate so they can bury in and stuff. I keep them on paper towels or newspaper. A lot of leaf litter. A lot of fake leaves. A lot of stuff so they can feel secure with stuff hanging over them. But I also keep them cool. I keep them at about 75 to 78 degrees, but I give them a hot spot. I give them a hot spot, sometimes up to 85 degrees, and I never miss them. I know a lot of keepers. Now, I've conversed with keepers all over the States. I've conversed with keepers in Europe and got everybody's point of view on keeping rhinos, okay? I've always kept them cool with a little warm spot. And I've never once seen them on that warm spot. <laughs> They're always on the cool side of the cage. But let me tell you, a lot of guys keep them the same way I do. And I'm not saying that my way is the right way and it's the only way. But this is the way that it's worked for me. I give them a hot spot of about 85 degrees. Rest of their ambient air temperatures, 75 to 78 degrees with a high humidity. 
but I don't keep them wet. I really don't keep them wet. I never missed them. I never missed them. The only time I spray them damn things, I don't spray the snake, I'll spray the enclosure, is if they're on the other side of blue, if they're getting ready to shed. And then I'll just jack that humidity up a little bit. But what I do, you know, let me pull out this little gal's drawer. Just stay right here, D. Um, just to show you, just real simple, okay? I don't know if you can see that in there, but real simple. You see, I, I use a bunch of just, just fake leafy green stuff. You notice I got a couple different water bowls in there. And that's to raise the humidity and the air in there. I like that humidity to be high, but I keep them dry, okay? And a lot of places where they can curl up and tuck in and feel comfortable. And for some reason, they feel good having something over their head. They'll use a hide, but I found that their feeding response and their general overall well-being, if they got something that they can tuck in and feel like they're up under something, but with an open view in the front, it's easier to feed them. When they're peeking through a little hole and hide, sometimes you're tapping around trying to get them to stick their head out. They just bang it quicker, or they feel like they got cover over them. <laughs> but anyways, I keep them really simple. But let me tell you, now, with humidity, I like them at about 75% humidity. And I do my little racks, and I'll tell you, I got them humidity gauges, and I'll stick them in there, and I'll add water bowls just to make the humidity go higher. And if I think that it's too much, I'll pull a water bowl out. And to get these damn things, everybody thinks that, okay, to get them to drink, you got to spray them and, and have them drink off the nozzle and all that baloney. It's, you don't. I gently lift the snake like this. I'll lift them and set the front corner of their body inside their water bowl and just gently tap their head down into the water. As soon as they smell water, They'll slam their face in and start drinking. For some reason, they don't move. They're, they're an ambush hunter. These guys stay in one spot for a long time. They're a lazy snake. And they wait for prey to come to them. You know, that's why I think they, they enjoy that stuff over their head and tucked in. Waiting for something to come by so they can reach out and pop it. But I lift them up and put them in a water bowl. <laughs> it's, and you think is that snake that stupid he can't go find a water bowl they're just that lazy and maybe in the wild they're drinking off of their body after the rains but I believe it probably dries up really quick because if you keep these things moist they're going to get respiratory that's just a given I've had them in the past get respiratory and I'm thinking I need to miss them and they come from a wet area and that's the worst thing to do because you will kill them even though the snake comes from a damn rainforest don't keep it wet. Keep them dry with a high humidity. They fare better. Cooler temperatures, they fare better. But they need that hot spot. I've never seen them go on it, but they need that hot spot. For some reason, they'll use that hot spot, who knows, maybe in the middle of the night when I'm not watching. But little warm spot, lower temperatures, high humidity, they'll do a lot better for you. And imports. Imported rhinos, guys, this snake is known to be the snake that brings all that crap in with them. All the damn viruses, all the stuff comes in on rhinos. It's just known for the snake that's one that spreads pyromyxia, all the stuff that kills your whole collection. So if you're getting imported rhinos, my best advice is quarantine them some bitches for at least a year. I quarantine them for a year. Like I had these snakes for several months now and I quarantine them for six, eight weeks being captive born snakes. If I get imported snakes, I quarantine them for a year. That's a solid year. I've got some snakes right now in the quarantine room that I want to bring out and show you. And they're captive-born snakes, but they're not through their quarantine yet. I mean, I'm going to leave them in quarantine for at least two months. And they're captive-bred and born. Because you never know. So you just, I take them extra safety precautions with my animals. But feeding these guys. Now, these little rhinos will take frozen thawed. I've got them, but I, but I feed them under low light conditions. I believe these things feed in the wild. I think they feed at night. They may feed during the day, but I think they feed at night because I feed them with just one little light on in this room. I open their drawer and I tap around them with a frozen thawed mouse and they grab it. If I do it with the bright lights on them, they're not real apt to grab it. They're, they're a little skittish. They're, 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 they're like a little bit shy. But I'm telling you what we're going to do. We're going to feed these little guys today. Okay. We're going to give them live. 
because we believe that the rhino viper's venom is just not as toxic as the gaboon or the or the ra cans the damn puff adders but we're gonna see how quickly they can dispatch a mouse i'm gonna give them a pretty good sized mouse now i'm hoping that they eat <laughs> i mean they're eating and they're thriving but like i said i'm doing it in low light conditions so we're gonna try it with the little light on them and see if we can get these little buggers to eat on camera today okay but this is my little female. You can see she's got them really elongated dorsal stripes. She's just gorgeous. What a beautiful snake. Let me grab my little bucket lid and I'll lift her up to the camera. Here we go. What a beautiful little snake. But, and like I said, they're variable, man. You'll, you'll see some rhino vipers with a lot of greens in them, reds in them, blues. This one's starting to show a little bit of that powder blue on her, on her head. And uh, she's got some red on her. She's actually getting ready to shed. She's going to shed soon. So she's a little bit dull. Actually, all three of mine are a little dull right now. They're usually a whole lot brighter than this. But it's a cool little snake to keep. I mean, they don't get as big as a gaboon. So they're easier to house. But if you follow them simple rules, high humidity little bit lower temperatures and keep them dry they'll do good but you spray them and keep them wet you're gonna get respiratory trust me i've had five guys call me and ask me man this thing's wheezing i got a rhino viper it's it's gurgling it's blowing bubbles and and i'm telling you and they're all doing this spraying the shit out of them thinking that that's what they need when they don't but that's just my techniques guys and try it with your snakes it works for me but anyways, we're going to jump over, guys, and we're going to put this little gal back in her back in her little drawer, and we're going to try to feed these guys for you today. Hey, guys, we just put the, the little rhino vipers back in their little setups. We're going to give them a couple minutes to settle back in, because I, I actually pulled a couple out to shoot B-roll, and uh, just to show you the males and the females. But, um, oh, check this out. This is cool. This is... You know when you're keeping your Bushmasters correctly, when you get shed skins like this. Every bit of the head, all the way to the, to the spike at the tip of the tail. This shed skin is 8 foot 2 inches long. Look at that thing. Isn't that incredible? And it's hard to get Bushmasters to shed in one piece unless you're keeping them perfectly correctly. You know what I mean? With humidity and the right amount of everything, but... uh. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. It's pretty cool to get one so nice. I mean, because a lot of times, my, my Bushmasters shed, and it, they always, I never have to peel them. I mean, they always shed nicely. But a lot of times, they'll break it off midway, and then it starts again. And, you know, so to get one in one solid piece, it's kind of a, a keeper. Just want to show you guys that real quick. But hey, but what we're going to do while the, while the damn little rhino vipers are settling back in, I need to feed my little baby um Mugenai. and i want to see if they're going to grab and hang on and you know part of my study so we're going to feed a couple of them for you real quick and then we're going to do a live feeding with the rhino vipers bothroth Mugenai. oh look at how ferocious that little shit is neonate feeding log and this is a male and gender. And as you can see, this little ripper bites and hangs on. Okay, let's feed another little baby Mugenai here. These guys are just a few weeks old and they've shed and they're they're eating ferociously. <laughs> little devil. I might have them pinkies a little too warm. They're biting them and hanging on for a minute, letting them go. They're skittish too. They see me moving around and they they drop it and look at me. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, you little stinkers. This is a little female. You can see she doesn't have that big bright cuddle lure. But they're mean little shits.
and she's exhibiting that that bite and hang on technique 90% of them do All right, another little Bothroth Mugeni. It's one of the neonates we produced here just recently. Watch how ferocious these little guys are. And a boy. Once again, hang on like a bulldog. They're doing so well. Even at this size, it can de deliver a serious freaking bite. Definitely nothing you want to get tagged by. It's a little flesh rotter right there. And Venom's highly necrotic. Hemorrhagic. I mean, you name it, it does it. He gonna start chunking it down. Well, we're gonna let him eat in peace. How about the little Mugenai, huh? They're little firecrackers. They are just as ferocious as the big ones. But uh, hey, it's time to get with it. We're gonna do a feeding with the damn Rhino Vipers. All right. Let's try this on camera. It's one of my male rhino vipers. First time on camera. Bright lights on them. We'll see how they react. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Man, they're just ferocious little shits, ain't they? And notice how he's holding it up there high, in true Bittus fashion. You, you see when we feed the Gaboons, they kind of do the same thing. And he's got that one right by the head. All right, let's give this female a shot. Let's see if she feeds on camera. She may not, she's rather shy. Let me tell you something, um, taxonomists. They're changing things constantly, okay? They've actually changed classifications so much lately that we don't know what we got, <laughs> okay? And, I mean, actually zoos and, and, and big facilities are, like, tired of this also because they can't keep changing their damn signage because the taxonomists think, well, this needs to be changed to this, and we need to call this this. Here's an example for you. The alternatus, you know, your Bothrop's alternatus. It's been Bothrop for years. But because somebody wrote an article back in 2013 or 14 and used this terminology of, Rhinocerophis or Rhinocerophis alternatus is what it should be. They've now changed it to Rhinocerophis, a whole section of bit of uh, of Bothrops, and they've classified them in five different sections now. It's it's just them guys are on some psychedelics. <laughs> so I'm sticking with the current names. I'm not using their new stuff on any of my stuff. So if you're looking up some stuff that I'm stating and you're seeing a different scientific name or a different Latin name, Venom Central's not changing. <laughs> I don't give a shit what they say it should be because they've done this back and forth with your neotropical rattlesnakes. They've done it three times. They've went from Dorisus to Simus, back to Dorisus, to where Culminatus and Zobcon are just individual species now. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. So I'm going with what I know.
Oh boy. Oh, she was very patient. She waited for the right spot. I mean, several times she could have hit that prey item and she didn't. She was waiting that thing was in the right position for her to grab it. Notice she's holding it up high. That's bit us do that. that. I believe that's to keep that rodent from getting traction and pulling out of its mouth, pulling out of the snake's mouth, but Oh, she's she's got the hurt juice flowing. This one is perishing rather quick. Oh yeah. How about the little rhinos, huh? I'll tell you, that that female, she waited till that damn prey item was in the right position for her to grab it. That's just how how lazy they are, right? Now that that's just, I mean, they're they're a little smarter than we think they are. But as far as venom toxicity, I mean they dispatch pretty quickly. And you know, there's so much that we don't know about rhino viper venom. And some guys believe that it's not as toxic as, say, some of the other African bitters. But I don't know. I, I think it's pretty freaking hot. But, uh, you know, we're not certain if it's got some cytotoxin in it. I mean, we don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. It's definitely largely hemotoxic. But um, but they kill pretty quickly. Uh, it was interesting. I'm going to do a few more live feedings with them. But, uh, but anyways, guys, if you're new to the channel, hit that V logo. And subscribe now and come on back and check us out at Dunham Central. Hope you guys liked it. This is Willie. We're checking out. Later.